Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Brandon Ange here, and welcome to my brand new series. So this series is going to be titled WWE Busts. Now, what is a WWE bust? What does that mean? Well, basically, what it means is there are certain wrestlers, you know, they hype up, or even the fans themselves may hype up to be the next big thing in wrestling. And for whatever reason, it just doesn't work out, and it's a complete flop. It's a bust. So inside of this series, every single week, we're going to choose one wrestler, and we're going to talk about them. We're going to talk about their backstory. We're going to talk about what happened, why it didn't work out, and where they currently are today. So in today's episode, we will be talking about uh, probably the, the most recent WWE bust, the one everyone is talking about. The man was just released literally last month from the WWE, and the man's name is none other than Lars Sullivan. Lars Sullivan, or by his real name, Dylan Miley, was born on July the 6th, 1988 in Colorado. So, details on his personal life are kind of iffy and not a lot of people know about his personal life. All we really know is he was born in Colorado, but he currently lives in Ohio. So Dylan was actually signed to the WWE in 2013. This was right when the Performance Center was first opened. It was a brand new facility. He began training apparently in October of 2014 is when they actually started doing his training. Uh, they went ahead and started having him do some like practice matches and stuff like that. His first recorded match in front of an actual audience was March the 29th, 2015. Uh, it was actually at WrestleMania Access that year and he actually won the match. He kept doing matches in front of crowds at NXT live shows, so NXT house shows. Uh, with, uh, they were not recorded or anything like that, but it was just for the crowd there for him to, you know, get used to being in front of a crowd. Fast forward to April the 12th, 2017, he actually debuted on NXT television. Uh, he actually debuted under his real name because he didn't have a ring name yet, but he actually had, was in a tag team match. He lost to DIY, uh, the tag team DIY, and shortly after that, in May of 2017, they finally came up with a ring name for the guy. They, they, they put all their things together, they worked together, and they finally came up with the name Lars Sullivan. After his NXT television debut, he only stayed in NXT for about another year. So for that year, he kind of did his thing in NXT, had some, had some cool matches and things like that, and his final appearance on NXT television was actually June 16th, 2018 at NXT TakeOver in Chicago, Illinois. Just a short few months after his last appearance in NXT, a vignette package, promo package, was begin to air on Raw and SmackDown both, teasing a main roster call-up, a debut on the main roster for Lars Sullivan. So these vignettes, these promo packages, teasing the great Lars Sullivan is going to be on the main roster, just kept going and going and going, and these vignettes seemed to like never end and the guy seemed to never show up and then a few months later we are now in january of 2019 we begin to hear rumors that lars sullivan has actually walked out on the wwe due to his mental health apparently he suffered a giant anxiety attack and when he was set to debut in january he actually just left the building so it's worth mentioning, around this time, rumors started to come out that WWE had major, major plans for Lars Sullivan at WrestleMania 35. Uh, what was he actually going to do? Well, he was actually going to take on the longtime face of the WWE, Mr. John Cena. Now, this is arguably, like, the biggest possible, like, chance that could have ever been given to an NXT star, like, coming up to the main roster. So it just proves how much trust and like likability and everything that that Vince McMahon or the powers that be in WWE had for the guy and maybe that was a lot of the reason he had so much anxiety and wasn't ready to debut on the main roster because they wanted to like put him on the main roster they wanted to make him look like a monster and then have John Cena come in and then do something together but when he was set to debut to start looking like that monster he just couldn't do it the vignettes and the promos promoting him actually coming to the main roster then stopped and then finally, a few months later, in fast forward to April of 2019, the night after WrestleMania 35 and Lars Sullivan finally makes his debut. He attacks Kurt Angle, who had just retired the previous night after his WrestleMania match against Baron Corbin. And this was a great way to get Lars Sullivan some heat, get him some attention as a bad guy heel character. This was good. And Lars kept going with this mega villain heel character. He attacked Rey Mysterio. He attacked the Hardy Boys. He was attacking all these fan favorites people. He then started feuding with the Lucha House Party where he would just beat up them so badly. But this is when the Lars run of terror kind of ends because on June 10th he was having a match against the Lucha House Party 
and he injured his knee. And it came out, it was a pretty severe injury and he would be out a very long time, maybe even up to like a whole year. And his timing on his injury was kind of interesting because he was taking off TV literally a few weeks before what would be a total media nightmare, a PR nightmare, a uh, horrible, horrible outing for the guy happened. So in May 2019, it was revealed that, uh, that he had uh, actually used a website called bodybuilding.com to actually go on with multiple accounts. And uh, we have to remember, this was before he was signed. This was between 2007 and 2013. But still, that was years. He, he was doing this for years with multiple accounts. And he, uh, he pretty much just, just put a bunch of like racist and sexist and homophobic and all kinds of offensive posts on this website, anything you could think of. Uh, he didn't use his name or anything, but somehow it was it was connected back to the guy. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about what he said, but it was a really messed up things. And, uh, I, I, I mean, this really changed the public image on the guy. I mean, the public image wasn't good. It's not like he was WWE's most popular wrestler or whatever. But it was like, you know, people were like watching the TV and being like, Ah, oh, this guy is interesting. He's like another big guy that, you know, Vince McMahon loves or whatever like that. Uh, but then with all this stuff came out and everyone's like, oh, the guy's just a total piece of sh**. So, uh, yeah, we hate the guy and let's start like a petition to get the guy fired. This guy is horrible and he deserves to, you know, go to hell or whatever. And the overwhelming amount of fans just crying to WWE, why, why is he, this guy still employed? Guys, you gotta do something. So WWE did indeed, like, do something. They fined the guy a hundred thousand dollars, which was a lot of money for what he was making. I mean, he was just a freshly new guy in the WWE. He wasn't, you know, very highly paid. I mean, it's probably just slightly less than what he was actually paid. So that's a big deal to actually find him that, and they made him t attend something called sensitivity training, so he would know better to, than to, to say these kinds of things on the internet, I guess, or to say these things at all, or... I, I, I don't even know what, what the point of, of this was, like he was going to change who he was or whatever like that. Uh, and then uh, his luck doesn't get any better because seven months later, something crazy from his past was revealed. Now, I have to kind of dodge around the subject here because of YouTube. I can't really say the words that I want. To, I don't, I don't want to say the words, but basically it was revealed Lars Sullivan was a part of a, uh, I'm, I'm just going to use the, the, the term here, I'm reading off of the page, he was uh, involved in a homosexual adult film. Uh, and we're just going to say that, we're not going to mention that again in this video, hopefully YouTube doesn't kill my channel because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about that, but it is a very big thing to get released about the guy that was kind of shocking the world, because he released a lot of like homophobic uh, like uh, slurs and, 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 and statements on the bodybuilding website and then it came out he actually participated in one of those one of, one of the films where he was uh, to, to do with that so I'm just gonna kind of dodge around the subject there so after this of course the internet loves to make fun of the guy so uh, I mean rightfully so uh, but an interesting point that came up in my mind is what is WWE gonna do about this well, WWE's answer to this, this thing being leaked on the internet was basically to ignore it, to do absolutely nothing. Which was very interesting in my mind at least, because WWE refused to induct China, yes, legend China, into the WWE Hall of Fame because she was also in a film of similar sort. Uh, they refused to allow her in the Hall of Fame. But here they are, Lars Sullivan, someone here, they're, they're actively trying to push and put on TV. They are just going to absolutely ignore it. But they won't do the same for China. They won't put China in the Hall of Fame. What sense does that make? Anyway, fast forward a few months later, actually closer to a year later, uh, Lars Sullivan makes his amazing, like, unthinkable return to the WWE. Because no WWE fan really thought they would bring back a wrestler after all of these things have came out about the person. It's just crazy. It just speaks to how much Vince McMahon himself actually loved this guy. So he returns on the October 9th, 2020 episode of Friday Night Smackdown. He attacked Jeff Hardy, Matt Riddle, and The Miz. So kind of the same theme, attacking wrestlers, trying to build him up as a monster. Uh, fast forward to October 23rd episode of Smackdown. He was in an actual match against Shorty G. He would win the match, but this match would actually turn out to be Lars Sullivan's very last match 
in the WWE. Then he was off TV for a few months, and then apparently WWE quietly released him in January of 2021. So I'm not entirely sure the reasoning for WWE not announcing Lars release publicly like they do for every other wrestler they have released. Uh, but they have officially released him from the WWE. Apparently Vince McMahon, the owner of the company, liked Lars until the day he was released. Since his release, Lars has said he is officially done being a wrestler. He is no longer going to be in the professional wrestling business. Uh, I have no clue what Lars, what kind of business Lars might get into into the future, uh, but he is no longer going to be a wrestler. He also has shared on social media markup images of WWE's plan for him that never actually went through. From being a new face at NXT, to being Vince's new chosen one, to being outed by the internet, Lars could have been the next big thing. He could have been the next big heel in the WWE, the next big monster, but it just didn't work out. And he is the most recent example of a WWE bust. So there you guys have it, that is going to do it for the first episode of my brand new series. Hopefully you guys found it a little entertaining. I know Lars isn't the most likable person in the entire world, but hopefully my explanation of his journey in the WWE was entertaining in some way. But thanks for watching guys. Right now on screen I'm going to leave a link to two previous videos for you guys to check out, as well as a button to subscribe to this channel if you're brand new here. But thanks for watching, I am Brandon Hodge, and I will see you guys in the next video.